this is the new king of bad isekai from Giguk. Let's see what he has to say. Blah blah, Giguk likes isekai. I am shocked. I, I love isekai. Your mind back for a bit. Uh huh. <laughs> no, no, wait. Hello, mother. Hello, mother. <laughs> Zenith's titties right here. Even though at the same time, Paul was fucking the other maid. <laughs> no. No, way too far. It's summer holiday in 8th grade and you've just discovered anime. Mirai mm -hmm. Nikki is close to peak. Akamega Kill was the most tragic thing you'd ever Yo, see. Yo, these are some old time animes, right? These are some like peak anime from like 10 years ago. Yo, who, where is people recommending me to watch these animes? Scene. That scene where Kirito gets his second sword and shouts- Sword it online! Will it ever win the community polls? We'll see. What's out? Starburst or streamer? Was the goddamn coolest thing you'd ever seen? Because of course it was. You were 13. I wouldn't Everything know. Everything was cool. I you wouldn't know. You didn't care about character development. Man, you didn't think about story structure. You heard a quote like, I'm a gamer. Not uh, because I don't have a life. Okay. But because, <laughs> because what? Sorry. But because I choose to have many. And you thought to yourself, damn. Cringe. That's deep. Cringe. Were you cringe? <laughs> Hell yeah, you were. Yeah. But you know what? You enjoyed yourself. And that's what's important. Even if you can look back and think, God, what was I thinking? Boy Embrace the cringe. When you embrace the cringe, suddenly that cringe becomes Riz, and that's pretty much Eminence and Shadow. What happens when you find a show that stops trying to run away from that cringe? It uh -huh. embraces the cringe. Full 100% commit. Cringe. Commit. Knuckles down and envelops you in the edge fest, high intensity, full blown world of cringe you thought yes. you'd grown past and refuses to apologize about. And here's the thing about this embracing the cringe, okay? Because a lot of these isekais, I've noticed, there's a lot of shitty saturated isekais. And the problem that they all have is that they take themselves too seriously. And this is a common thing in like shonen animes too. Whenever an anime takes itself too seriously, oftentimes it just becomes cringe and kind of dull. The thing about shonen animes that's developed in comedy, the comedy, the funny gag moments makes it such that the more serious shonen moments are much more appreciated because of the gap moment. It's, it's a contrast between how a show usually is and how a show can become. If it's always serious, then it's not as fun. Eminence and Shadow, interest, interestingly enough, is an isekai where it is in such a saturated field. It's another fucking one of these battle fucking uh, isekai. You got a harem. You're doing all these different shit. But the theme is it's so cringe. He's trying to be so tuny and he completely commits to the act it suddenly becomes so fucking hype it is this weird phenomenon of you go so cringe to one direction that you come out the other direction and it's so rizzed up i need more power power <laughs> you get the eminence and shadow. Anime. <laughs> he straight up was talking German in first episode. I want more of that. Has been absolutely killing it lately. 2022 was not only full of surprises, but shows that push the boundary of anime. Mon oh, Demon Slayer, bro! Fuck, my old channel had Demon Slayer season 32 content too, and I think Summertime Rendering also, right? We used to cover this shit. Only full of surprises, but shows that push the boundary yeah. of anime. Modern classics that stamps their mark on the scene and will stick with us for years. What's the rock? Kaga Summer season three. This is some peak shit, um, dude. Eminence and Shadow is not one of those shows. This is every fourteen-year-old teenage huh? angsty fantasy turned up to eleven. It's edgy. It's oh, yeah. horny. Best scene. Nice thumbnail. Thank you, Delta. It might well just be the Monday new man. Of trashy isekai, and it's by far the most goddamn fun I've had in the genre yes. for years. Yes. Three Zero, Slime, Mushoku Tensei. All brilliant shows we've gotten in the past few years. But re I haven't seen Re Zero, but Mushoku Tensei Slime. They're more, oh, Slime, there's like more like downtime, more funny moments. But Mushoku Tensei is another, I guess, serious anime. Yeah, I would consider Mushoku Tensei a well-done serious anime, right? But like not every show can be a Mushoku Tensei. A lot of shows, and Mushoku Tensei does really well because of the insane world building and immersiveness that's been done through the world building and through character development. But like not every show can do that. And a lot of shows like come flat by trying to be too serious. And then it just comes off cringe in a bad way, right? Not all the way cringe like Eminence in Shadow, but just like, it's just cringe. Years that absorb you into that intricate world and have shown us how truly great Isekai can be. If these three shows are the three star Michelin meals of Isekai, oh? this is Eminence in Shadow. But fuck these three star Michelin star meals. Bro, fuck. These fancy ass restaurant, you pay three hundred dollars for a guy to show up and fucking shave some cheese onto your fucking small ass portion of a steak. No, 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 no. Sometimes I want that fucking Big Mac meal, man. Sometimes I want that shitty ass Seven Eleven pizza at three in the morning because in the moment it tastes so fucking good. And Eminence and Shadow, I don't care if it's not three star Michelin. It's my degenerate ghetto food, and I'm all for it. And this is me. 
Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Eat it all. But how did Eminence and Shadow get me to embrace the cringe? Giga, do you fantasize about getting hit by a truck? Is this another case of me having Isekai brain rot? No. I think episode one of Eminence and Shadow is what really, like, stuck out to me. Because episode one, if you didn't understand, like, the series at all, if you didn't read the synopsis and you went in blind like me, everyone was thrown off guard because you're immediately placed in modern day Japan, but this main character is talking to himself and considering everyone else's NPC. So I'm like, hold up, is this like a reverse isekai? Is this like a different character that came to Japan and now sees all these random characters as like named NPCs and whatever? And then later on, you realize that he fucking smashed his head into... No, no, sorry. Before even that, he starts fighting a military dude with the crowbar. I'm like, where the fuck is this show going? Then he fucking bashes his head into a boulder to hype himself up, jumps out into traffic, gets hit by a truck. And I'm like, are we doing Isekai now? I, I, like, wait, what? And then it turns out, oh, it is Isekai. That shit, that is what you call a fucking hook. That episode got in great. Great pause from yes, Anna Rose is great, but that first episode I think captured a lot of people's attention. And then the next time everyone got hooked after episode five, ASMR I'm Atomic. God damn, that shit was magnificent. Oh, okay. I haven't forgotten what good anime is. I still remember my best of 2022 anime list. I we need to watch those more, dude. Whenever Giga does a video, we can we gonna watch those on stream. I still remember Chainsaw Man. Speaking of which, Chainsaw Man itself is having a collaboration with. Raid Shadow. Actually, I think this is a Nikkei sponsor, but Raid Shadow Legend. Use the discount code hashtag Kaka for your free temple. And back to the regular schedule content. Oh. While you play. Come on, come on, come on, Giga, come on. Okay, okay. And back to the video. Here we go. I know what you're thinking, but look, it's been one whole year since my last Isekai video on this channel, and the tax has to be paid. Why mm -hmm. girls have true crime? Giga has bullshit Isekai, but. I love my bullshit isekai though. Contrary to popular belief, I don't just blindly recommend every trash isekai that- Is that a really shitty show? I don't know what this cover is, but the fact that he specifically chose it, is this like a really shitty show? <laughs> or is this maybe something we should watch? Trash isekai that airs every season. And before you go, yo, that's Cap. This is my face when I'm saying it. Look at this serious face. Do I'm you looking. see how deathly serious I am taking I'm looking. this? I would never mislead you on something. That's a lot of caps. <laughs> that's a lot of caps. Something like this. This is a show that won't go down as a classic of anime. It doesn't have a lot in common with the isekai greats like Mushoku Tensei. Eminence and Shadow- It's the other end of the spectrum. It doesn't try to be a Mushoku Tensei. It doesn't try to take itself seriously and become this like great uh, work of fiction. No, no, no. It's a totally end of the spectrum. Again, if Mushoku Tensei is like fine, exquisite dining, Fucking Eminence and Shadow is that 3 a.m. fucking Taco Bell McDonald's run, bro. Is I love it. Self-serving. You see what happens in it, and it's like... <laughs> okay, Claire getting... I, you know what I realized? Even here, too. But in, in their recent, like, promo pictures, there's a picture of Claire and Mary, and they both have their feet. And it's like, they do a lot of feet fan service to Claire. It's, it's, I'm noticing this. Even this right now. This is season one, when Claire was locked up, and she got punched in the face. That came out of fucking nowhere. But even now... Her feet, bro. Her feet is still on display. What is up with the fucking Claire Feet fan service? Well, see, Mushoku Tensei is more like... The plot goes like... One more time. One more time for the fans. Come on. Let's see. Eric's getting curb stomped. More like... The plot goes <laughs> like this. Sid Kagano is a man obsessed with... But unfortunately, he gets hit by a truck and dies. Re not unfortunately. Fortunately, he did that. He did that intentionally. Born in a fantasy world, he Sid continues his pursuit of power. Power. Secret Secret organization, the Shadow and so begins the early story. Story. Blah, 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 yeah, it's like the cult of Diablos and all the girls starts believing in this shit, but it's actually true. It's actually true. And Tumblr ass plot developments he can think up on the spot and it turns out to be true. Yeah. man has no investment in the people around him and what's going on. He's just role playing his perfect Isekai. Trying to be side character. Right? He's trying to be a mob character while everyone else tries to stand up beyond everyone else. Sid's goal is to be side character a Kai power fantasy story and everyone in the world is forced to dance to his tune on one side he's shadow incarnation of vengeance then there's shadow the yeah slayer of pussy the man fucks hold up slayer of pussy 
<laughs> Why'd you go to Aurora and me a Slayer of Pussy? Then again, how... Cause, okay, hold on. Y'all seen the recent episode, uh, Eminence and Shadow, season two episode. Now, Claire and Aurora are pretty much the same person, right? So, if Shadow makes love to Aurora after Aurora has possessed Claire, does this still count as incest? Let me ask you that question. The man fucks without losing his virginity because he never loses. He never Shadow loses! Is the man who based their entire personality over listening to My Chemical Romance once. This is what people who shopped at Hot Topics... No, no, no. And speaking... Speaking of... Okay, I need to show you guys this. But speaking of Eminence, like, Eminence and Shadow like soundtrack, I want you to know how tuny this is. And oh, look, look at this shit, right? Look at the Eminence Shadow OST. Look at this, okay? This is a playlist of the Eminence and Shadow bangers I've been listening to a lot. But I want you to take a notice of that. What was it composed by? Look at this. Composed by Kenichiro Suehiro, which is like the Japanese composer, right? Who makes most of the soundtrack. And then Ludwig van Beethoven. This show is so fucking tuny, even the soundtrack composers. When you look at a glance like this, ah, of course, Ludwig fucking von Beethoven is on it because of Moonlight Sonata. But it's just, I read this shit and it was so comical. You have, you know, a modern day anime composer and you have a classical legend. That's just how tuny Eminence and Shadow is. Saw in their mind's eye. Shadow is the type of guy who would say, You know what they call it, the Dead Sea? Why? Why? Because I killed it. Wow! But on the flip side, he's playing old Sid Kagano, a guy devoted to being an invisible background character who won't stand out, won't attract attention, chasing his dream to be the ultimate. That confession scene was pretty funny. Ultimate real life NPC, which. Hey guys, I'm in New York City just hanging out. <laughs> Honestly, it's not hard to do nowadays. <laughs> that sound bit is actually so funny to me. Thing is, he will refuse to break character no matter what. And I really mean, no matter what. He, he won't even heal himself. Oh, that's a nice clear frame. But he won't even heal himself because he thinks that if I healed myself after all that, it's not realistic, right? I'm a side character. I need to be act injured. His sister gets kidnapped and tortured. His school is the target of a terrorist attack. There and he loved this shit. He started creaming the moment he realized his school was attacked by terrorists. And in fact, Mahoka right now, there's a lot of tuning moments too. Our classmates getting murdered around him left and right and the first thing that goes through his mind is all right boys it's npc time How can i need to die first and cue the skyrim npc music sorry this is oblivion i give myself the most pathetic death possible as shadow he will live but that pathetic death combined with his feast from the Bushin festival against Oriana is what made Oriana fall in love with him, right? Him sacrificing himself for Oriana, I'm pretty sure, like, sealed the deal. Actually commit to robbing a grand piano only to transport it to an underground cave so he can ominously play it. Okay, and, and, and the thing Giga probably won't mention is the fact that there is fucking floating feathers. As soon as Oriana arrives at the scene and she hears piano being played, the fucking cape here. It's like there's a fan behind you. I don't know where it is, but there's a fan just like making his cape flutter and making sure that these white feathers are just like fluttering everywhere for extra dramatic effect. You know he thought of this shit. With the lights beaming down for the ultimate edgelord look. Mm. The man is more dedicated to his role than Jake Paul is to playing an asshole. He could give Daniel Day-Lewis a run for his money in his commitment to method acting. Oh, okay, so this is like a parody of Isekai? Kind yes. of. Comedy is subjective. Is a phrase people use when they're about to say they don't find something funny. Eminence, Eminence Shadow is goaded, and that is objective. Eminence Shadow has some decent jokes here and there, though it can be hit or miss. Sometimes it'll do... Ah, the coin scenes, the hit and miss. Yeah, there, there is some hit and miss comedies, right? There's some punchlines where it just doesn't, like, fully get to me. The coin scene was pretty funny. It came out of fucking nowhere. Or Alexia was like, you wouldn't be just jumping for a coin, right? And he's like, oh, I would. Here and there. He starts so barking. Hit or miss. The Oriana neck-breaking scenes, you know, Scale getting dragged away because he kept gambling. I think that's pretty funny. Oriana was just more... Sorry, not Oriana, sorry. This is Anna Rose. Anna Rose breaking her neck and fucking like, sneezing to try and copy Sid's, like, move. I think that was actually pretty funny and cute. Sometimes it'll do this thing where... Alexia, I didn't completely understand. Like, this is where she's about to cut Sid, right? And he has blood everywhere after he rejects her. Like, was that truly funny? It was more shocking than if not anything. I will spell out this overused trope and pass it off as a joke, which is something I've always dis- I will never not find this not funny. Okay. Gamma falling down a fleet of stairs only for her to fucking land so her ass is full on display for us. That's not really comedy. It's just fan service, but I still think it's funny. Spies, but sometimes it can play around with that. Epsilon's titties falling down will always be funny to me. No one saw anything. Nope. Expectations in amusing ways. We've all watched that scene where the main character accidentally goes in the hot spring, sees the girl, she yeah. goes, But it's different here. 
because he has the sword of Excalibur. And he does the with this towel. He gets angry, blah, blah, blah. All right, here's what happens with Sid. Barges into Hot Spring. Uh -huh. Hits the girl's Hot Spring. Uh -huh. Doesn't acknowledge the girl. Kazuma Konosuba. Yo. But not even that. He doesn't even acknowledge her. He just sits down. Flexes his pee pee. Uh -huh. Refuses to elaborate further. Uh -huh. Leaves. Don't no towel slap. Towel slap. <laughs> this is the show that I uploaded that scene onto TikTok of the towel slap. I got a fucking community guidelines strike. <laughs> There's they didn't care on YouTube, but on TikTok, they're like, no, you can't be posting that shit. We're afraid to play around with tropes we're familiar with and subvert our expectations to varying degrees of success. But what I found more impressive and a hell of a lot more amusing mm. is how hard it commits to its own bullshit act. It makes fun of itself while doubling down, tripling down. Baldy, the amount of bald jokes in this show is insane. You know, I gotta say, Nelson's gad is kind of crazy here. He's a, he's a little rotund, right? He's a little chubby, but goddamn, his lower body's Hacking. Quadrupling the fuck down on all the cheesy, cringe-ass- Bro, that flash step, though. In anime, you know there's always a flash step. There's always, like, a like, like nothing personal kid moment. You know, when someone's, like, moves so fast and everyone else is like, <gasps> and then someone says, hi hi right? This is a fucking frame step, bro. Moments we roll our eyes at in your typical trashy power fantasy isekai. Beyond the weight's coming down. Such a good moment. He wasn't even going all out. Anerose realizing, oh shit, mundane man was not even at his full potential. On being a straight up parody, it's just entirely self-aware. You find yourself not taking the show too seriously, then end up being completely invested in all the dumb shit that ends up happening. They say that love and hate are two halves of the same coin, but Eminence and Shadow proves that the exact same thing is true with cringe and cool. Yes, cringe and cool. Love and hate are two sides of the same coin. Cringe and cool, also two sides of the same coin. Yeah, I, I agree. And I think it's like, again, I, I give this like explanation. Think of it like a two, like you, you ever play a game and it's like a 2D dimension, right? And the furthermore you go in one direction, you come out from the other direction. So you go all the way here and you exit out and then you come out from this side, right? This is what I think with cringe and cool, right? Eminence and Shadow, there's like a cringe and cool meter. It commits so hard to the cringe that it exits out the cringe door and it comes out the cool door. You know what I'm saying? It's like this, this loop. But most animes fall flat because they try to be too serious and they're in this cringe zone without being able to come out to the cool zone. If you know what I'm saying, you know, I think I, I sure whatever. Because what happens when you take all those cringe scenes that would only appeal to an edgy 13 year old, distill mm. it, rev up the stupidity to 100. That's does right. It somehow become cool again? This is what it does. Endless it and does. Asks. And I think there's one scene that encapsulates everything this show is about. Xenon Griffey versus Shadow? Episode five, just... episode 5 versus Xenon Griffey. I still have this episode saved to my PC because I sometimes watch it by myself. Just, just between these scenes, right? Just the, the absolute display of strength Shadow shows to Zenon Griffey. Immediately, like, the episode starts off with, like, a monologue of, like, Zenon Griffey saying, a man clatter in dark, darker than black. It's like, oh, my God. Even, he, like, the, the atmosphere, the mood is being set. He shows up. Fucking the first thing, you know, Zenon flexes is, like, I'm a future member of the round. Shadow does some really cool shit. He doesn't make, make, acknowledge him. He moves to save Alexia. Then he shows up and he's like, oh? Where is this future member of the rounds? And bro, the rest of the episode, fantastic. Not even just Xenon Griffey versus Shadow, but even Alpha saving that girl and showing Iris the difference in strength. Bro, that episode is like, if there's like a 10 out of 10 episode, Eminence and Shadow, season one, episode five, brilliant. Skip ahead. Sid has always been obsessed with becoming powerful. In his past life, he was already pretty OP. The man dedicated himself to being Batman without all the... 15-year-old kid fighting ex-military veterans with crowbars. That's him. Fancy gadgets. He had trained enough to take down any thug he encountered. But so what? No matter how much a mortal can train, there are still limits to what you can achieve. Yeah. But if he went up against a fire- 17, sport, my bad. What if someone dropped a nuclear bomb on you? I said this in episode one in my video, and you can go back and check the comments, but I made a comment here. It's like, when this was dropping, I was like, how the fuck are you gonna build a beat a nuke? The only way, like in modern warfare, it's an arms race. You gotta develop your own nuke so that you can say, hey, we have a nuke, so don't try to fucking hit us with the nuke or I'll hit you with the nuke. You must simply become atomic. I made that, I, I, I mentioned something like that in season one comment, everyone was like, bro, you got no fucking clue what's about to happen. No matter how much you develop your muscles, hone your mind, perfected your skills, if someone comes along with a nuclear bomb, you'd yeah. be instantly vaporized. 
Or so he thought. Because reincarnated in the new world, he refused to give up on his dream. There was still a height he had yet to attain. Become so, nuclear. Years upon years Become of training, atomic. He arrived at but a single solution. Solution. That's right. That's right. If I don't want to be vaporized that's by right. a nuclear explosion, I must simply, simply become, become the nuke. Yes. And the crazy shit that he says this alt is Xenon Griffey. I'm not sure if they're going to see it, but well. Xenon Griffey, you need to understand, the concept of nuclear explosions, atomic weapons, doesn't exist in this realm. Xenon Griffey here has just taken pills to sacrifice everything he has to become an awakened state. He is like the, the fifth awakened or something. It's like a huge deal. This motherfucker gets clapped around by Shadow's hands because he gets so disgusted by the fact that Xenon said, Xenon said, I'll show you the power of the Almighty. Shadow... Ain't having none of that. Drops the sword, smacks him around, shows you, oh, I'll show you the power of the Almighty. He starts talking about nuclear weapons. The concept of nukes doesn't even make sense to him. He is just beyond bewildered. He's thinking, this is a crazy man in front of me about to nuke me, and I don't even know what a fucking nuke is. If I don't want to be vaporized by a nuclear explosion, I must simply become the mm -hmm. nuke. ASMR. Um, oh! Okay, how the, how the fuck did Alexis save this? Okay, people are saying that this went only above, like this like containment zone of the of the purple was outside of Alexia, but like I saw this and like how the fuck did Alexis save? And not even just that, did he just nuke an entire fucking city for fun? He didn't need to do this to Zenon, but he did. This is the most classic anime trope of like an explosion, some kind of Kamehameha, some kind of beam attack, right? Like everything goes to white and black and look, this animation, then slowly just like, ah, right? Okay, come on now. Okay, look at the fucking range of I'm Atomic, okay? You're gonna tell me, and I, I, I know I see you. You said Sid can control what the atomic effects, right? Look at this, look at this. You tell me, even if she's enveloped in all of this, all of this. That Alexia is fine. I guess it is. I guess it does, just doesn't damage her. I don't know why. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But all these innocent people's homes and livelihoods, gone. Decimated. Bro was more of a threat to this town than the actual enemies of this episode. <laughs> just that, was the best. that was the peak shit. Episode 5, I was nutting. I was absolutely nutting. There are moments in anime where you wish you could relive that moment. You wish that you could just forget and re-experience that moment. Most recently, I think that's going to be Mahoka, right? Onisama, Tatsuya versus the Crimson Prince in the tournament going like this. That was definitely one of those moments. This episode 5 I'm Atomic moment, absolutely another one. It is a special moment. I just watch. What is this? He's Why turning he atomic. atomic he, he's, turning atomic. <laughs> he's, he's turning atomic. He's turning atomic. so this doesn't try to differentiate itself from the typical power fantasy isekai. This fully commits to being the power yeah. fantasy isekai. Yeah. Then he goes 10 steps further beyond what is necessary. He is stupidly OP. He's never in any real danger. He'll say cringe lines and pass them off as the coolest thing ever said. You think other isekai protagonists specialize in having their own harem? Well, not only yes. does every influential figure happen to be a- <laughs> I mean, I feel like every isekai protagonist does have a harem, bro. Like, like- uh, like, Adi Furuta we're watching right now, right? Slime, he kind of pretty much already has a heart, like a kingdom. I'm going to assume Overlord, like, the, you know, the crossover we just saw? He had those battle maids. Like, I'm sure even in ReZero, like, the main character is going to be surrounded by... Like, everybody has a heart, in Isekai. He girl who, of course, ends up falling for him. But he's goddamn built an entire shadow organization with zero boys allowed. Alpha. I'm really surprised that there is no token trap or fanboy yet in the Shadow Garden members. Like, I thought they might, like, at least, like, allow one member in, like, a trap, but no, not yet. Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Ada, Zeta, Sigma. The man's creature is- <laughs> okay, does Sigma exist yet, though? Does a Sigma exist? I hope one exists as Sigma. It's own harem institute of hundreds, not dozens, hundreds of super-powered waifus that end up amassing not yet. so much wealth and power that they end up influencing the world stage. And he did this by complete- accident but the yes. best part of all he doesn't even know he did it because he still thinks that this is just role play right he thinks that everyone's just playing around all this is having to see everyone in the world take sid's bullshit role playing 100 seriously yeah. this yeah. is a fully functioning fantasy land with nations 
Like everyone else is completely serious and fully just locked in into the show. It is so dramatic. Everybody's just fucking fighting for their lives. Like even in the most recent uh, arc, right, of the lawless city, people are turning into ghouls. There's like a three-way war between the vampires, the white power, which is like Yukimi's faction, and then they got the juggernaut, right? Shit is popping off. And what is Sid doing? What is Shadow doing? He's walking around, spamming the moon is red. The hour of awakening is near. Run if you value your life. And he's stealing and pickpocketing stuff. He does not give a fuck about what's happening. All, and while everyone else is living their serious moments. And I think this is a phenomenon that's used really well. I don't know how to describe it, but One Punch Man also does this thing where it's like they have an OP main character, Saitama, but everyone else is just living their serious moments. And those serious moments of these supporting characters is the core of the show. And while everything else is so serious, all the conflict later gets blown off by the main character that appears at the end that doesn't take anything so, 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 just so funny, right? I think that kind of structure is really good in these series to really create the hype. Make sure that the side supporting characters are really good. Make sure that you are immersed into the drama, but then another character comes out of nowhere, breaks that fucking immersion because he just doesn't obey by the laws of everyone else. And that op I, I did not just say that. Anyways, let's continue vying for power secret organizations manipulating the global politics characters are in a life or death struggle to defend the homeland they so love and then yep. along comes this dude countries yep. pour their resources into figuring out what exactly is shadow garden who's in it what do they want what are their goals and motivations how does their presence affect the world and meanwhile sid's just there like he <laughs> shadow man say power <laughs> everyone is Coins. playing game of baldy bald Bald drones while Sid is playing Dungeons and Dragons, except he is every dungeon master's worst nightmare. Someone who just makes shit up as he goes along. I'd actually love to be in a campaign where D&D &D was like Sid, just random shit makes shit up. That'd be actually chaotic but fun. Breaks every rule of the game, ignores the big shiny thing that is shouting, this is the plot, but is incapable of rolling anything but nat 20. And so everything he ends up doing has real consequences to the world around him. Except to Shadow. Everyone else is suffering, everyone else is, you know, actually being impacted, but Shadow doesn't give a fuck. A lot of people have compared this to Overlords, but I think this is actually closer to Isekai One Punch Man, and I'm- Yes, yes, I would agree. Isekai One Punch Man is a very good representation of this enemy. Maybe not the fact- just in the, the comparison that I made before, too, of like, Saitama and Shadow. Both really OP beings that can't just solve the problem right away. So they're just off doing their own thing. Then you have a well-developed cast of side characters who are developing their own story, their plot. Everyone is so immersed and everything is so serious. And you can live the, the threats. You can understand the threat levels and all this different stuff because of those side supporting characters. And when you think stuff is impossible, when, when like, for example, the vampire Elizabeth has been reborn and everyone else is struggling, you know, shit like that's happening. You're like, oh no, what's gonna happen? Shadow comes out, fucking saves the day, does this cool shit, leaves, unexplaining. It's so hype. I love this formula. And I think this is a reusable formula to recreate hype moments rather than an OP main character being in the action from the beginning and solving everything by himself. I'm going to be honest. Part of the reason I'm making this video is because I'm praying that I'd be making this video because Eminem Shadow is just popping off. Bro, this video was fucking made eight months ago and I'm still reacting to it now because I know that Eminem Shadow, the topic is just, just trending and I fucking love this. Uh, this doesn't stop at just two seasons. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, I'm excited to get yeah. more of the Kai greats, but for the love of God, give Okay, they totally baited us with this. These new outfits in season one opening, there was no point to this. The author baited us. I thought for a second we're gonna get new suits, we're gonna get a different arc, you know. But no, none of this shit mattered. And you know what? Eminence and Shadow? It makes sense. They completely baited us. Yeah, it makes sense. They just fucked us. Give me Trolling. five more double Big Mac meals of this, please. Em yes, more burgers, more burger wrappers for waifus. Eminence and Shadow is a series that should not work, but somehow it does. This is what happens when every single person working on an anime absolutely understands the assignment. Mm -hmm. It's a series which gives absolutely zero fucks in being cringy, edgy, or childish. Sid is a man who laughed so hard it became reality, but the more you watch, the more you get sold in his bullshit. It throws at you every trope, every cliche, Titties. every eye-rolling corner line you've ever heard in your life and you end up eating that shit up like it's the first time you've ever seen an anime this is what happens when you reach the peak of trashy entertaining isekai and i don't know what more i can do to reach even greater heights i don't want to be the last boss i want to be the one in the story who operates from the shadows he said the line but in dub
Waganawa Shadow. Okay, now it's perfect. Is that it? Does he have anything else? Another dub video from Giga as usual. An older one, but I'm just going through the older collection. Please like the video, subscribe if you haven't, but Eminence and Shadow, truly one of the isekais that I've been just loving since the beginning. First episode again was such a, a plot twist. It was such a bait, such a hook that gets your attention. It's like, is this a generic isekai? Is this a reverse isekai? What's going on? It's like, oh, it is a fucking isekai. And then the future episodes, you're not really understanding what's going on. You're just kind of like, oh, he's just playing along with these girls. They're just role playing. What the fuck is going on? But the comedy is still there. And then episode five, if this show if you're not convinced by episode 5, I don't know what to tell you, but I think a lot of people were impressed by episode 5, and I think Eminence and Shadow is quickly becoming one of their most favorite isekais. And if you haven't watched them, bro, I'm telling you, man, you gotta check it out. By the way, we do these live reactions on stream, 7 a.m. PST, every weekday on YouTube, so hope to see you guys there. Bye-bye.